Number two, which of the following project delivery methods would be the most logical and cost effective for a typical town library project? So one of the things you'll find is that as we go through a few of these questions, um, there's a couple of key words that are really what the question is actually about. And uh, if we were kind of thinking about what those uh, key words were, obviously uh, one of the keys is gonna be project delivery. That is a term that you should absolutely feel comfortable with. And project delivery just means what's the manner that uh, the project is going to move forward. Uh, so is it design build? Um, design build would mean that uh, there is uh, one contract um, between the owner and the designers um, and, uh, and builders. Um, so that's a very particular way of doing it. It's a pretty popular way of doing it, but it's still probably only about maybe 15% or 20% of the time, something like that. Uh, another one would be design bid build, which is one of our potential answers. Um, and that's the sort of more classic um, where uh, owner uh, talks, uh, uh, hires an, uh, an architect. They go through a very long process uh, of designing and uh, going through schematic design, design development, uh, CDs, and then eventually to the bid process. Uh, and then a bidder is chosen, so you have a bid process, and then from there it's now the contractor's project and your role is in construction administration, CA. Um, so that's a very long, drawn out way to deliver a project, but there are certain benefits to that. Uh, if you think about just design build compared to design bid build, uh, with uh, design bid build, by the time we actually have a contractor chosen, we have a very clear idea because we've gone through a lengthy design process and sort of vetting all the issues. We've gone through a bidding process, so we now have a very clear set of relationships from multiple bidders. Uh, and we can absolutely say, well, out of these bidders, this is the low, this is the high. We get a, a range of what's possible. Uh, all of uh, that uh, level of understanding is sort of puts you in very good stead to know that you're getting a good deal uh, on your project. Uh, and then you have to build it out. Uh, so uh, those are probably the two um, most common. Design bid build, definitely uh, closer to 50% of the time. It's by far the most common. And if it's not specifically mentioned, uh, then does it, and you're curious about what project delivery method it is, design bid build would absolutely be the assumption. Um, so uh, that, um, uh, you can see how you start to kind of go through these things and see that, well, okay, so design, bid, build, the advantage there is I get to know what the low, low cost is, what the low bid is. Design, build, that, however, the weird thing about design, build is I make the deal, if I'm the owner, the client, I make that deal very, very early in the process, and so uh, I have to choose that single entity. Um, the big advantage to the client is when something goes wrong, when there's a dispute, it's one phone call, right? It's one set of relationships. So design bill is very useful from that standpoint if you're an owner. Uh, but the downside is there's very little, uh, like you haven't, you haven't designed the whole thing out before you start getting the, the bids and getting the contractors involved. You're actually doing that before anything's been designed. And so it's, um, it has certain downsides. It's hard to judge exactly what you're gonna get out of it. Uh, so certain times design build makes sense, other times design bid build makes sense, and then a couple of other terms that are interesting to note. Um, uh, one would be multiple prime. Multiple prime is interesting because what that's referring to is that I have multiple prime contractors. So that means I don't just have a general contractor, I have say two or three or four general contractors. But since n not one of them is the overall general contractor, none of them get called that. They all get called prime contractors. So the uh, sort of example to sort of make this hopefully a little more understandable would be, imagine you're a university and you're building a laboratory building. And you have a set of architects that you've been working with and they've been doing a bunch of university buildings. So you want them, because they're really knowledgeable about the university, and you want them to do the exterior and kind of deal with how it creates a courtyard and how all the walkways work and the landscaping muted uh, back and forth into the building and all of that. 
but they're not experts in laboratories, and laboratory takes a lot of very specific expertise. Uh, so you might have a totally different uh, designer and contractor for the laboratory part, right? So that would be multiple primes. Um, and uh, you can actually get into situations where you might have three, four, even five different multiple primes. So that's a way of delivering it. Clearly, you would have to do the drawings differently. The contracts would all be different. Uh, and so that's what we mean by project delivery. You're, you, all, the, all the systems for how, how the whole project moves forward uh, are decided once you decide which project delivery uh, way you go. And then some of these other ones, Fast Track and Construction Manager, are other uh, project delivery methods. Fast Track, you've probably heard of. It's a classic on questions uh, for the, uh, uh, on the NCARB ARE stuff um, because it's so kind of odd and crazy, um, but it's a you know, known and viable system. It's a pretty rare project delivery, though. And the reason for it it's pretty rare is because it's kind of crazy uh, and expensive. So fast track is when uh, time is of the essence. Could be because you're building a stadium and the football games are going to start in September no matter what. Could be because you're building a school and the kids are going to show up. It could be that you're building a building downtown, uh, let's say Manhattan or something, and the carrying cost of the land is so expensive uh, that you just want to get the building up and running as fast as possible so you can start making money back. Um, but fast track is where it's all about time. Uh, and so the way Fast Track works is the architects uh, figure out what the sort of general shape of the building is going to be and they do an excavation and foundation plan. And then they hand that over to a contractor. The contractor starts building the foundation. While that's happening, the architects are figuring out what the steel frame is going to look like. And then they hand that over to a contractor and they start building that as soon as the foundation's ready. And while they're erecting all the steel, the architects are now doing the, what the skin is going to look like. So it's a whole series of different packages and the building is literally being built while it's being designed. Obviously that's a stupid way to build a building because you're going to make a lot of mistakes. But if, the, if it's really all about time is money, then it can make a lot of sense. So there's uh, a lot of reasons why you might do fast track. Um, uh, and it's a really good one for questions, which is why I spend so much time talking about it. Um, but in reality, it's a fairly rare um, uh, uh, process. You will find a lot of pretty regular projects might have an aspect of them that are fast tracked. Uh, just uh, they kind of, you know, for a smaller section where maybe they have to get something done uh, in order to pacify uh, code officials or uh, to meet some other kind of deadline, but then the rest of the project will go in, in normal. So there's a lot of different uh, ways that these things get combined together, but it, I don't think they'll be convoluted like that on the exam. And then construction manager is the other sort of one that's a, the big one, and this is pretty much all of them design build. Uh, design, bid, build, fast track, construction manager, and uh, unlikely one that might come up is that multiple prime. Construction manager is when instead of hiring an architect who then goes and does the design and then we bid it out to a lot of different contractors, uh, effectively the construction manager is somebody who's hired by the uh, owner. They hire them in, they become part of the team. They're kind of like an employee. I'm, I, they're not actually employees all the time. Sometimes they are, but they're not always employees. Sometimes it's a contractual thing. Um, but if you think of them like an employee of the owner, you start to understand how it changes the contracts. So instead of having a contract with the owner to the architect and then a separate one with the owner to the contractor, in a construction manager, there's really just the contract that goes between the owner and the architect. Uh, so it's sort of shifting around responsibilities and there's a bunch of advantages to construction manager. The biggest one is that you get their expertise early on in the design process. Uh, and the other big advantage to an owner is that the profit that normally would go to a uh, GC, a general contractor, gets uh, taken back in by the owner. So they, they don't have to pay for that profit. Of course, the flip of that is they're also taking the risk that the general contractors always take so they can lose their shirts as well as save a bunch of money. Um, so, okay, what I said in the beginning was, here's a bunch of things, the, the project delivery, absolutely gonna be part of this exam. You should definitely feel comfortable with all these different terms and how it might start to impact the contracts and the relationships and the timing and all of those things. Um, and when you look at the question, so the first thing there was that 
uh, the, the words project delivery, so we know that, that it, what it's about there. And the second thing here is uh, a town library. So what that's telling us is that this is a uh, this is not uh, a private project. This is not somebody building an office for their, their business or something like that, which, you know, they can do whatever they want, right? They may realize like, oh, you know, uh, we have some builders we know, we like them, we're just going to go with uh, the design builders that we know or something like that. They can make whatever choices they want. In a town library or a school or, uh, you know, any of those sort of... Um, uh, infrastructural, uh, municip municipality-run infrastructural type projects, they have to be able to explain to the taxpayers that they got a good deal. They have to be able to uh, make sure that they can show that they are following all the rules. So uh, in that kind of scenario, the whole design bid build where we actually are really clear about what the low price is, they don't necessarily have to take the low. There's usually some rules about they have a little bit of flexibility because they may not trust the low. Um, but uh, the fact that it's run for a town is uh, absolutely telling us that the correct answer here is going to be B, design, bid, build. Uh, so all of that to say, make sure you feel comfortable with project delivery, uh, that each of these different ones, they, they have different, like I said, different contracts, they have different lengths of time, um, and they have different sort of value in different scenarios. And like all of these things, the point is not to memorize the names. The point is to sort of think of what a topic is and then kind of imagine a question that, like, you know, put it into a scenario uh, so that you start understanding the way that they could ask you questions. That's really what you're looking for when you're doing the studying for these things. Yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> I feel like that's something we've learned from talking with the folks at NCARB about how they craft the questions that they write. And you have to be really careful um, about um, all the little the little bits of information because at a quick glance sometimes it might make you think one answer is appropriate but if you look really closely um, at a couple of the sort of scenarios as you say that they're suggesting and in this case as you said the town library project that's that's change that that's changes the context of the question yeah. totally completely um, yeah you, you flip that word out like the town grocery store and it's a totally different answer um, so uh, Yep. You're, you're scanning the questions to see what is the scenario they really mean, and then you're sort of placing these concepts that you've read about and studied or listened to us about, and then you're trying to sort of uh, find the scenario that's the through line of a, a sort of clear thought about why this one would make the most sense. We got uh, pretty much everybody got to be on that. <laughs>